So this video is part of a two-part series talking about the transition from hominoids to hominins. Uh, one of the first things that we have to talk about when we're discussing this idea of hominoids is what exactly are they? Um, the thing to keep in mind is that hominins are the group that modern people are a part of. Hominoids is a broader characteristic, or I'm sorry, a broader category that uh, we would technically fall into. But the, uh, the way that we define this one is just all non-monkey arthropoids. So in this case, if you remember, monkeys are going to have a very long tail, whereas apes and then modern hominins, like people, uh, do not have a tail. So hominoids are basically these uh, earlier groups of primates that are a little bit less complex than some of the apes and modern versions that we're used to thinking about. Um, this timeline gives you an idea of how things have changed. So we've got millions of years ago here on the top. So it goes back 35 million years ago all the way up to modern day. We start off with early anthropoids. We have our branching off between old world and new world primates. So remember the new world primates, things like the, uh, the Capuchin monkeys, old world primates, things like baboons and macaques, uh, apes and humans, diverge off when we get into hominoids. So again, everything in this category will not have a tail. So orangutans, gorillas, you can see chimpanzees and bonobos are far uh, more closely related to modern people than gorillas and orangutans. This has to do with where we're branching from a common ancestor. So to give you a simple idea, if we look at baboons and macaques, they have a common ancestor, and eventually both of these branch off from there. So even though they'll say, like, well, you know, people are closely related to monkeys, like that sounds crazy to me. Well, that's because we actually branched off from things that you commonly think of as monkeys, you know, pretty far along, like pretty, pretty long ago, uh, we branched off from them. So our most common ancestor with them would be here, and that's one, two, you know, three major branches ago on this timeline. Keep in mind, this doesn't even include the other hominin species that modern people are more closely related to. So we'll get into them as we sort of progress through this chapter. But what this is showing is the way that modern humans are related to some of the upper level primate species. The next thing for us to talk about are some characteristics of hominoids. Uh, the first thing to discuss is that they're the largest of the primates. So if you think of like gorillas and orangutans as examples, they're much bigger, uh, especially than some of the, uh, the New World monkeys, which are relatively small. Uh, this is an important piece. They have the largest relative brain size. Brain size itself doesn't really matter as much as relative brain size to the rest of the body. Another thing that's very important when it comes to the brain is the structure of the brain. And hominoid species generally have a more complicated brain structure, which allows for like more processing power, more upper-level thinking abilities. Uh, this is something else we have in common with them, specialized teeth and unique molars. You think about your own teeth, you have like your flat incisors on the front for kind of like cutting through things, and then like your, uh, your canines next to that for like tearing food, and then your molars in the back for grinding food, we see most hominoids follow that same general pattern. The unique molars that hominoids have is something that scientists use to help identify some of the fossil evidence that they're finding. Uh, the last thing then is a more upright posture. Now obviously hominins, like modern people, are the only ones that are using true upright posture. But there is a more upright posture in hominoids than there are in earlier monkeys and like some of the lower level primates. The next thing to talk about briefly is hominoid geography, like where the hominoid group came from. Uh, the thing you have to understand historically is that about 24 million years ago, a lot of the rainforests in Africa began to dry out. Um, the, the earth does go through periodic warming and cooling periods as, as well as like wet and dry periods that just naturally fluctuate. So we are naturally seeing a drying period around that time. So around 24 million years ago, that's when a lot of these new hominid species began to evolve. And uh, the fossil evidence supports the idea that about 100 species of hominids existed between 24 and 14 million years ago. So we're seeing this huge burst in speciation because there's a change in the environment. 
Remember when we talked about speciation in chapter 15, we were going over evolution. We said it generally occurs when the environment is changing. So that's what we're seeing at this point. Africa is beginning to dry out. More of the rainforests are transitioning to like savannas and grasslands. And that kind of a change is supporting hominoids as opposed to some of the traditional primate species that we're thinking about, like monkeys and things like that. The next thing for us to talk about are the hominins, because that's really the transition that we're looking at in this video, hominoids to hominins. So just to give us a definition to function with in the beginning, hominins are human-like primates that are more similar to modern people than other higher-level primates. So like basically they're more similar to modern people than chimpanzees and things like that. Uh, we'll take a look at some fossil evidence for this as we move forward. We'll look at the many different hominid groups. Uh, there are things like Homo florensis, uh, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalus that are more similar to modern people than uh, these higher level primates, things like chimpanzees that we still have. Um, the next one goes to some of the fossil evidence. Most hominins diverged from African apes around 5 to 8 million years ago. So we're talking about this change happening um, a long, long time ago, and, and we'll start looking at some of the modern hominid species that came during this transition. You're working on that interactive timeline that does a good job showcasing some of those species. Um, as far as the physical characteristics go of hominins, they have a large brain, like even more, um, even larger than the ones found in hominoids. It's also complex in ways that make us more capable of reasoning and like upper level thinking. There's a thin, flatter face and much smaller teeth. The last thing, which we'll spend some time talking about at the uh, end of this video here, is uh, bipedalism, the idea of walking on two legs. This change actually brings about a lot of physiological changes. Uh, this is an image from your textbook, and it goes through and talks about some of the changes between chimpanzees and hominins, so like modern people, um, when it comes to differences mostly due to bipedalism. Uh, for example, the first one, if we look at where the skull attaches of the chimp, it says it attaches posteriorly, like in the back. You can see that the, uh, the gap in the back of the skull that connects to the spine is found in the back of the head, whereas for us, it's on the inferior part of the head. It's on, like, the bottom. So there is a distinct difference between the bottom of the skull and the back of the skull. So for uh, most hominoids, it's going to attach in the back, whereas for hominins, the skull attaches to the spine at the base. Um, the slightly curved spine we see in most primates, as opposed to the S-shaped spine that we see in hominins, this is to help us carry the load of our upper body. That curvature of your spine allows your body to deal with you know you carrying things like holding stuff in your upper body. It allows your uh, your upper body to kind of accommodate for that stress. Uh, the arms are longer than legs and used for walking. Think of the way we traditionally think about chimpanzees moving around. Arms are shorter than legs in hominins and not used for walking. Uh, this is where things start to get interesting. The next one, the pelvis. The long, narrow pelvis is found in hominoids, whereas a bowl-shaped pelvis is found in hominins. That's because for us, it's more of a weight-bearing structure. The entire weight of your upper body rests on your pelvis, whereas for uh, hominoids, like chimps, a lot of the weight of their upper body is being supported on their arms. So our pelvic structure is completely different from theirs because it's far more weight-bearing. Uh, the last thing is the femurs. Their femurs are angled outwards. You can kind of see like the, uh, the curvature of their femurs, whereas our femurs are angled inwards. So um, you don't have a great angle at the, this side to see that, but um, like our femurs are curved in a way that's different from the curvature of what we're seeing in hominoids. The last thing for us to talk about is this idea of bipedalism. Uh, bipedalism has some advantages and some disadvantages that go along with it, and we have to talk about like why this trait would have evolved in modern people. Uh, for starters, we're going to talk about the things that make it a disadvantage. So you can imagine like uh, people walking around at the same time as chimpanzees, and or I shouldn't necessarily say people, but like a more modern type species, so like a hominin that's more similar to modern people. Um, now, if we're talking about Africa while it's drying out, we will have like grasslands on the perimeter of some of these rainforests. 
So a disadvantage for a more modern type species that's walking upright is that predators can more easily see them because they're standing up. Uh, another thing that's a problem with bipedalism is it puts more stress on the hips and the back because more of the weight is being carried on the pelvis that puts more strain on that part of the body. Uh, they're also slower. If you had a race against a chimpanzee, um, you're probably going to lose. So bipedalism does definitely make us slower. And the last thing is that we expend more energy while standing uh, than something does that's moving around on four legs. Be careful with that one, because we'll talk about efficiency later on. Um, but when it comes to energy just standing, it takes more energy when you're using bipedalism because it requires more balance. So the next thing for us to discuss are some advantages and maybe discussing why this characteristic could have evolved in more modern people. Uh, the advantage for starters is being able to see further. As people transition from um, like primates that are living in the rainforest to uh, individuals that are living out in like the savanna and grasslands where it's flatter and you can see further, it's uh, very much of an advantage to be able to be tall and to see. You can see over the grasses, you can also see more predators coming. So even though predators can see you, you can see the predators, so there's kind of a, a balance that's going on there. Uh, the next thing is we're far more efficient when it comes to moving and running. This is going to be important because some early people were what they call endurance hunters, meaning like they would chase prey species until they literally like collapsed from exhaustion. And our efficiency of movement combined with our ability to sweat is partly what allowed early people to do that. Uh, the final thing, and this is really the advantage, is that bipedalism frees up our hands and it makes more modern human-like species capable of not only carrying objects, but also using tools. This is really the main advantage that we're seeing from bipedalism. And it's largely thought to be like, this is the reason that it evolved, is because it allowed people to take advantage of their hands in ways that other primates could not. So you could carry a spear. You know, you can use simple tools while moving around. It made it far easier to carry resources back to other individuals in the group. There's enough advantages to bipedalism that allowed this characteristic to be an advantage and then to end up uh, being something that was an adaptation and eventually evolved into uh, the characteristic that we're seeing in the species. So as always, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Uh, make sure you answer the questions at the end of the video. Thanks.